hey, do you have a moment? I wanted to thank you for helping us out in Concord. If only we'd run into you sooner. What happened to you guys? Long story short, we've been on the move since the attack on Quincy. There used to be more of us. It all worked out in the end. No. Our problems aren't so simple. You got lucky. But I think your luck's run out. You think we don't know that? Look at us. We're barely keeping it together. We've been through hell. Don't mention it. You guys have been through hell, huh? You have no idea. In these past few months, we've lost everything. My son, he's... He's gone. Your son? What was his name? Kyle. My son's name was... Kyle. That's awful. No parent should have to lose their child. No. No, they shouldn't. I just keep thinking, maybe I could have done more. Anyway, thanks again. You were his dad. It was your job to protect him. You failed. Don't you dare judge me. You don't know what happened. I did everything I could, but those damn raiders. I hope they suffer for what they did. <sighs> I understand how you feel. I lost someone too. But you and I, we're still here, right? We have to go on. For them. In our last episode, we tracked an Institute courser down to the ruins of Green Tech Genetics. We found the courser attacking gunners. Gunners who had kidnapped a runaway Institute synth. I guess they thought they could bribe the Institute to pay money to get her back, but that's not how things went down. The courser killed them all, but then he met Nate before he could get the synth. With the courser dead and his chip in our hands, we now have got to decode this thing. We can't take it to Virgil, he's a super mutant. His thumbs are too big. And really the only other person in the Commonwealth we know who can deal with things that were at one time in a human brain, or a quasi-human brain, is Dr. Amari at the Memory Den. We can tell her how things went. You're back, the glowing sea, Virgil. What happened? Well, you know, took a radiation bath, hung out with a big green guy, then I pulled this encoded chip out of a courser's neck. He was not happy. Long story, and I don't have time. I need the code off this courser chip. Do you know anything about decoding courser chips? I found Virgil. He has a way inside the Institute. But I need a code from a courser chip. A courser chip? You fought a courser? Oh my god. Unfortunately, I can't help you. I've worked on a lot of synths, but never a courser. I don't know what that chip does, let alone how to decode it. But there are people who might. I work with a group that, well, they're the only ones I know that even have a chance at cracking Institute security. They are called the Railroad. The Railroad, huh? What's your take on them? I've been working with them for years, but they're so secretive. I don't even know who they are until they bring a synth to me. They're the only people I know who even have a chance of decoding that chip. I hope they can help you. Next up, the railroad. Choo-choo! Ah, yes. Anyway, I hope they can help you. They can't be the only people who can crack a damn code. A pre-war computer chip, maybe you could find someone else. But the Institute is far more advanced. They built the synths, for God's sake. The Railroad's the only group with people who even understand Institute security protocol at the most basic level. Trust me, you need to talk to them. If we have met the Railroad before this point, we can say... Thanks, Doc. I know the way. You do? Oh, then good luck. I hope they can help you. However, if we have yet to meet the Railroad, 
we can say... Thanks, Doc. How do I find them? I can't contact them directly. They usually come to me when they have a synth that's escaped the Institute and wants new memories. But I do have a code phrase. Some kind of clue if I ever needed to find them on my own. Follow the Freedom Trail. Any idea what the code phrase means? I'm not sure. But I remember there was a pre-war landmark with a similar name. I'd start there. Hopefully they've placed other clues to tell you where to go after that, hidden somewhere in plain sight. That's how they think. In my secret club, the code phrase is just two words. Awesome and me. Yes, well, that's not going to help you here. But I'm sure someone with your creativity will be able to figure it out. That's all you have? I'm afraid so. The railroad is understandably paranoid. They're fighting the Institute, after all. You'll have to figure it out as you go. All right. I'll find them. Good luck. I'm sorry what I have is so cryptic. But hopefully you can figure things out as you go. Follow the Freedom Trail. We heard that before. At Diamond City. Institute has to have enemies, right? What? You mean the railroad? Well, that's a fairy tale, man. They don't exist. Nah, I heard from my cousin. He knows a guy that works for him. They got a code phrase and everything. Follow the Freedom Trail. The hell is that supposed to mean? You're full of it, and that kind of talk is going to get you snatched up by the synths. And then we remember, while we were on our way to Vault 114 at Park Street Station, we passed a sign that talked about the Freedom Trail. Heading that way, we can try to find our first clue. Upon arrival, a Protectron exits a charging dock. A sign right next to it says, The Freedom Trail. And spray painted on a piece of plywood are the words, At journey's end, follow Freedom's Lantern. Huh. Doesn't make much sense to us now, but perhaps we should remember this. Talking to the Protectron. Welcome, Patriot, to Boston Common. The start of the... Freedom Trail. Feast your ears and learn more about the historic Freedom Trail. And learn the history of Boston Common. You're a tour guide? Error. Response not recognized. I'm interested in the history of this place. Let us go back hundreds of years. It is the year 1775. For seven years, thousands of British soldiers have camped on this very soil in their orderly rows of tents led by General Thomas Gage. They seek to quell the growing tide of revolution the night of April 17. The officers are assembled, General Gage. Four days prior, I received word from the Earl of Dartmouth. We have our orders. Lieutenant Colonel Smith, gather 21 companies of our best men and carry them with the utmost expedition and secrecy to Concord. Once there, you will seize and destroy all artillery, ammunition, provisions, tents, small arms, and all military stores. But what of the colonists, General? Take care that the soldiers do not plunder the inhabitants or hurt private property. But we can and must defang them. So, near midnight, Colonel Smith marched with 700 Redcoats to face brave American patriots in the Battle of Lexington and Concord, and thus the Revolutionary War began. Continue on the trail to walk through more of our great city's history. Tell me about the Freedom Trail. Starting here at Boston Common, follow the red path as it winds its way through our great city's streets. Markers on the trail are placed at many famous historic sites. See Paul Revere's house, the Old North Church, the Old State House Bunker Hill, and many more. Never mind. Enjoy historic Boston. Okay, so the Freedom Trail is a literal trail. It's a red line on the ground, and it starts here. We see that the line starts at a circular marker on the ground. But wait a minute, 
the marker has spray paint on it. A number pointing at a letter. Seven and A. Some sort of code? Seven and A, right, doesn't mean much to us just yet. Just outside this marker, we find a plaque. We're at Boston Common. Established in 1634, Boston Common started as a communal grazing ground for cattle until it was made a public park, the oldest in the country. In the year before the Revolutionary War, a thousand redcoats camped on the common. The redcoat brigades that marched on Lexington and Concord departed this very ground. Oh, now that is interesting. Well, I guess we better follow this red line. The line takes us north. We turn left at Park Street Station, where we found Nick Valentine. The line turns northwest, then west, until it gets lost under dirt and debris. Let's see, where did it go? Ah, but then we see it. It crosses the street. Moving north, we discover the Massachusetts State House, a location I have already done a video about. The line passes through another marker, and here we find more paint. Four. L. Definitely a code. Seven A. Four L. Okay. Could it be as simple as arranging the numbers in order and spelling out a word? Not for an organization as secretive as the railroad, right? Nearby, we find another plaque. New State House. The new State House was completed in 1798 to house the government of the state of Massachusetts. The land selected was originally one of John Hancock's cow pastures. The original dome was constructed of wooden shingles and covered in copper smelted by Paul Revere. The state government used this building continuously until the formation of the 13 Commonwealths in 1969. That last one is an event that never happened in our universe, of course. This is why the pre-war flag in the Fallout universe has the 13 stars in a circle, each one representing the 13 commonwealths. All right, back to the line. Let's see. Uh, it turns south, uh, uh, but then it's been paved over. Oh, wait. There it is. It turns right into a rusted car. Oh, it dives under the rubble here, but I bet it turns a corner. We don't see it crossing the road. Oh, it's on the opposite side of the road. Here we go. It turns east, and we follow it back towards Vault 114. But at Park Street Station, it turns left. It continues north until it passes between a bus and the old granary burial ground. Yeah. Everyone's still alive. Well, of course, ghouls would occupy a cemetery. I guess they feel at home here. In the middle of the old granary burial ground, we find a monument dedicated to Benjamin Franklin. We had to come here during the Gilded Grasshopper quest, which I covered in a previous video. There's a dead gunner here that we can loot for caps and armor. Next to him is a duffel bag, but that's it for the old granary burial ground. On the ground just outside the graveyard is another marker decorated with even more paint. Two and A. All right, we're well on our way. Only three letters so far, and we know the full word is at least seven. We'll keep exploring. Just outside the graveyard is another plaque. The Granary Burying Grounds were established in 1660, making it the oldest surviving burial ground in Boston. Many famous Revolutionary War heroes were buried here, including John Hancock, Paul Revere, Samuel Adams, and the victims of the Boston Massacre. In 2031, after the tragic death of Amelia Butler, the city council voted unanimously to have her remains interred here. Whoa, what happened in 2031? And who's Amelia Butler? We don't know anything about this person. She's not mentioned anywhere else in any of the other games. Maybe Nate knew something about her, but sadly he's not sharing. Looking at the ground, we follow the trail north. But then it gets lost again, and we have to walk forward blindly, hoping to stumble upon it. But then we see it again. It's not much, but it shows us which way the trail bends. Off to the north. Moving that way, we catch the attention of some super mutants. I'm supposed to be a 
in this ruin, we can loot a first aid kit and a couple of meat bags, but that's it. So back to the trail, we can try to pick it up again. We last saw it moving north, so we can walk that way until we find it. There it is to the right. It bends a corner moving east and it heads towards the direction of Good Neighbor. Oh, all this time we were walking on the trail and we didn't even notice it. It crosses the street and moves southeast in front of Good Neighbor. Here we find another marker. Now a six and an O. Six and an O. Okay. Oh, really? Sharp-eyed viewers might be able to guess the password at this point, but it couldn't be that. It's not that simple. It has to be more complicated than that. We stand before the old state house. This is the same building that Hancock gave his speech from in an earlier episode. And here we find a plaque. Built in 1713, the old state house is the oldest public building in Boston. During the years before the Revolutionary War, this building was a hotbed for the ideas and ideals that would result in revolution. It was here that John Adams said, the child independence was born. In 1770, right outside its doors, the Boston Massacre took place where five American colonists died inciting rage against the British occupation. The old state house was the seat of the Massachusetts government until the new state house was constructed in 1798. Wow, the Freedom Trail really walks us through some important old history. Well, we could go into Good Neighbor to sleep and restock if we need to, but we'll go ahead and loot the bodies out here and move on our way. The trail turns northeast, and walking that way, we pick it up on the other side of a rusting car, but then we lose it again in more rubble. It passed down this alleyway, filled with mongrels. Moving forward, we climb a rubble ramp on top of a ruined truck. Peering down, we find the trail again, and there's a marker just outside this red door. We've discovered the old corner bookstore. We see raiders off in the distance, and they're a bit too close for comfort. And yet they're too far away to attack from here. Maybe we can avoid them? Hopping down. Ow, oh, we've got ghouls! <laughs> But that commotion alerted the raiders. We've got to take him out. Someone is shooting at him. Bug it off, eh? That won't do. Not at all. Pay for that. Okay, it was a battle, but they're dead. Back to the old corner bookstore, we can loot the dead and examine this marker. Three I. Three I? No, it can't be that simple. Why? Peering up at the red door, we find a plaque just outside of it. The old corner bookstore was originally built as an apothecary after the devastating Great Fire of 1711. Originally, the land belonged to Anne Hutchinson the controversial Puritan who was excommunicated and banished from Massachusetts for her heretical beliefs and sermons. During the mid-19th century, the Old Corner Bookstore was the home of the leading American publisher, Tickner and Fields. They published the works of such luminaries as Charles Dickens, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and Henry Dave Thoreau. Many of those were frequent visitors to this site. Sounds like a fascinating place to explore, but sadly I'm on a mission. Peering down at the ground, we see that the trail turns right and moves east up some stairs. Cresting the stairs, we find a ghoul. <laughs> Moving forward, we see a large building off in the distance with a fire just outside of it. And we find clear evidence of super mutants. We've got a fight on our hands. What's all this? I trust everyone's still alive. After clearing the place, we can loot the bodies and then head down the steps to find the red path. We see that the part of the path obscured by the asphalt has been painted red. 
somebody came back here and fixed this part of the Freedom Trail with paint. Maybe the same people who painted the cipher on the markers? Stepping forward, we discover Faneuil Hall. This place is also associated with the Gilded Grasshopper Quest. Peering down, we find the next marker. 5R. And at this point, the password is apparent. So disappointed. Why couldn't it have been like Secret Lantern or I don't know, something that is a bit harder to guess. On a pedestal surrounded by chairs on fire is our next plaque. Donated to the city of Boston in 1742 by French merchant Peter Faneuil, Faneuil Hall was a commercial hub in colonial Massachusetts. It played a notable role in the American Revolution. Protests against the British Sugar and Stamp Acts that began here led to the doctrine of no taxation without representation. Later meetings were held here, which culminated in the Boston Tea Party. Many of the founding fathers met here or gave speeches here, notably Samuel Adams, leading to the building's nickname, the Cradle of Liberty. But from here, the path turns right, then east, then south, then east again, and down this alleyway to the side of Faneuil Hall. Creeping that way, we pass a door to the right, but our path doesn't go there. Moving forward, we find more super mutants. Our path gets lost in the rubble again, but we pick it up as we climb down this hill and move north. It skirts past Faneuil Hall, past this lamppost, and behind this fallen over billboard. Passing under the billboard, we see that someone has painted the trail on the ground again, and this painted part of the trail points northeast. Following the painted trail, it soon reconnects with the real one. We pass a subway to the left, and the painted trail takes us east, then reconnects with the trail and rounds this corner, before continuing east and rounding another corner to push us west. Right into a super mutant lair! <laughs> With the mutants dead, we continue north until the trail passes through another marker. And here we learn what we already know. The password has eight letters. 8D next. Ugh. Just ugh. Nearby, we find a plaque on Paul Revere's house. Built in 1680, this wooden building is the oldest structure in all of Boston. In 1770, this home was bought by famed patriot Paul Revere. Paul Revere dwelled here with his family, including his 16 children? Oh. Until 1800. Paul Revere was living here when he made his famous midnight ride to Lexington and Concord to warn Samuel Adams and John Hancock that Redcoats were en route to arrest them and seize the militia weaponry. Okay, cool, yeah, but 16 kids in this small house? Did they stack them up on shelves or something? Wow busy guy. But the trail continues north. Moving forward, it takes a sharp turn left and passes right by this large statue in the middle of the square, right before the Old North Church. This statue appears to be a statue of Paul Revere, but there's no plaque. But moving closer to the church, we find the next marker. One R. Hmm. The trail ends right at the church. And oh god, who could have guessed this passcode? This passcode is so secure, I think I should make it my online banking passcode, you know. I mean, if the Institute couldn't figure it out, <laughs> I should be set. But then we remember what the piece of plywood said at the very beginning. At journey's end, follow Freedom's Lantern. The trail ends here at the Old North Church, and on the stairs we find a glowing lantern. And above it, painted on the wall in white spray paint, is a lantern right above the next plaque. Built in 1723, the Old North Church is the oldest standing church in Boston. Its 191 foot tall steeple also makes it the tallest church in Boston. On the night of April 18th, 1775, Lieutenant Colonel Smith marched with 700 British soldiers to Concord on a mission to disarm the rebels. Using a plan devised by Paul Revere, Robert Newman climbed to the top of this church and lit two lanterns to alert patriots that the Redcoats were coming up the Charles River, thus inspiring Longfellow's famous verse, one if by land, two if by sea. 
the battles of Lexington and Concord that followed would start the American Revolution. Well, perhaps this railroad is about to start a revolution of its own. Maybe we can be a part of that, or maybe we just want to watch from the sidelines. At any rate, we need their help, and so to follow Freedom's Lantern, we enter the church. We arrive in a ruined room filled with destroyed display cases. The doors are all blocked. Our only way out is through a hole in the wall to the west, where we find ghouls. Even in the midst of this destruction, this church is gorgeous. It looks like a fire has raged here. Many of the pews have been burnt. The pipe organ is still here, but it's askew, half buried in rubble, likely unplayable. There is a huge hole in the ceiling. Sunlight pours through. We find a number of pre-war skeletons here, a couple of containers, and as we explore, more ghouls crawl out. There are a couple of staircases that lead to the upstairs, overlooking the main chamber. These sections are mainly empty, a few skeletons, only one container. Behind the pipe organ, there is a staircase that brings us to a blue door leading to the church steeple. Outside, we arrive in a small room with a cap stash on a crate, and we climb a staircase to the top of the steeple. Along the way, we loot some bobby pins, and at the top, we find a hardened sniper rifle and two lanterns. Of course, we find two because the British did come by sea, though clearly these haven't been here since the 1700s. We get a great view of downtown Boston, but we don't find any railroad, so heading back down, we arrive back on the ground floor, and we can move to the eastern side around the pulpit. Here we find the spray-painted lantern graffiti. Follow the lanterns, and this lantern is directly above a door. Heading inside, we find a first aid kit on the wall, and moving through a door, we head down some stairs, dimly illuminated by lanterns. At the bottom, we find a door to the right, and some purified water and bubble gum behind the door. Heading through the door, we appear in a really old section of the church. It looks like some sort of catacombs. And creeping closer, sure enough, we see plaques on the brick walls. Looks like people were buried down here. We again see the spray-painted lantern above a skeleton, and a ghoul appears before us. Hiding behind this wall, we can get him. We find a tomb here with a marker, and a skeleton hangs out of it. Moving forward, there are lots of darkened nooks and crannies along the way. Some have containers, some have skeletons, some have empty coffins. They all flank a hallway where we sometimes find a ghoul. But eventually, we reach a dead end. We see the lantern graffiti spray-painted on the ground directly before a grave marker. Shoe Bale Bell and Robert Finley. Don't think the inscription is very important, but out of the tomb, we find a red wire leading to a marker. This is a Freedom Trail ring, like the ones we saw outside. And it looks like the center disc is a button. Pressing it. So, that's not right. Okay. Oh, wait. The text ring can be spun. Hmm, it spins. Oh, I see. And there's a red arrow pointing up. We've got to match the arrow with the correct letters. And here's where we input our tricky code. All right, here we go. One is R. It starts with R. Two is A. Three is I. Four is L. And then spinning it back, we go to five, which is R. And spinning it even further back, we go to O for number six. One more A. And a final D. The door slides open, and it looks like the super-secret password. 
that gains us access to the railroad is... Railroad! That's about as clever as making your password... Password. Can't wait to meet these sneaky fellows. The chamber before us is dark. Stepping forward cautiously... Stop right there. You went through a lot of effort to arrange this meeting. But before we go any further, answer my questions. Who the hell are you? We found the railroad, but they were expecting us. And wait, we recognize that voice. We heard that voice in Diamond City. So join with us in fighting the real enemy, the Institute. Join the railroad. All right, so this must be their leader. Who are we? Why don't you tell me who you are first? You wanted to see us. So that means you're playing by our rules. So, answer my question. But if we pass the Charisma check... In a world full of suspicion, treachery, and hunters, we're the synths' only friends. We're the railroad. So answer my question. I'm just exploring, looking for salvage. Hmm, and you just happen to guess the password to the secret door. Right. Put down your weapons first. Until I determine you're not a threat, We'll point our weapons wherever we damn well please. I followed the Freedom Trail looking for the railroad. I'm not your enemy. If that's true, you have nothing to fear. Who told you how to contact us? I helped Carl out of a jam. He knows a guy who knows a guy, and, and they hooked me up with a lead. This will go a lot better if you stick to the truth. Who told you about us? But if we pass the Charisma check... We'll look into that. I don't want to get anyone into trouble. We'll find out, one way or another. I'm not saying. We have very powerful enemies. If you want to deal with us, we require your cooperation. Dr. Omari told me how to find you. Very interesting. Or if we heard about them in Diamond City, we find a different option. I just heard a rumor about you guys in Diamond City. I see. Last question. Why are you here? I found a Courser chip. Can your people decode it? Let's say, hypothetically, I've come into possession of a Courser chip. Would you be able to help? I need a Courser chip decoded. I tracked down and killed a Courser at Green Tech Genetics. Now I need help breaking the code on his Courser chip. You have what? This is not a joking matter. I didn't know we were having a party. What gives with my invitation? Oh, I see you invited the Courser killer. Nice. Deacon. You're late. You're saying this intruder actually killed a courser? Single-handedly? <laughs> oh, that'd give even Gloria a run for her money. Newsflash, boss. This guy is kind of a big deal. If you're done interrogating him, you might want to show this courser murdering machine a little courtesy. Hmm? Just a thought. I owe you an apology. Anyone who kills a courser is good in my book. I'm Desdemona. And I'm the leader of the railroad. However, if we didn't kill the Courser, and we're not here for the Courser chip, if, for example, we came here much earlier in the story, this conversation goes a bit differently. Instead of talking about us killing the Courser, this Deacon character will mention one of our other exploits that we've achieved. He'll talk about some other quest that we had done, and he can bring up quite a few quests. In this example, however, I think I hadn't gotten any farther than releasing Valentine from Vault 114. And at that point in the game, the conversation went like this. I'm Desdemona, and I'm the leader of the railroad. And you are? Deacon, where have you been? You're having a party. What gives with my invitation? I need intel. Who is this? Wow. Newsflash, boss. This guy is kind of a big deal out there. Do we know each other? I didn't need to meet you to hear about you. You have made waves. Sounds like I have a stalker. It's not like that, Chief. A lot of people know about you. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. Glad someone noticed. You know, you're practically famous. You've left a trail of destruction in your wake. Gone places no sane person would go alone. I'm not sure why he said a wave of destruction. I haven't killed innocent people. I haven't been particularly violent. When I recorded this, all I had done is release Nick Valentine from Vault 114. So I'm not sure why he said that, but he has unique things to say for many of the quests we can complete in the game. I won't include all of them here because some are primary plot spoilers, 
but I'll include some of the things he says about some of the other side quests we can complete, many of which I've covered on this channel. If we cleared the combat zone... This here is the champion of the combat zone. That's a hell of a feat. If we completed the last voyage of the USS Constitution quest... Everyone saw that ship, the USS Constitution, fly into the Baxter building. Craziest thing. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? And I'm not sure about the next one. I think he says it if we complete the unmarked quest, Gun Run, in Salem, which I also covered in a video. Rumor had it Salem was about to go Nova. Then some stranger broke her to peace. Sound familiar? If we helped Billy the Kid in a fridge... You're the Good Samaritan, helping out that little ghoul boy, Billy. Not many people would do that. If we completed the Yang Z nuclear submarine quest... A Chinese nuclear sub, an undersea vault, and a daring rescue. That ring any bells? If we killed Kellogg... The railroad owes you a crate, hell, a truckload of Nuka-Cola for what you did to Kellogg. He was our public enemy number one. If we completed the Covenant quest... You saved Amelia Stockton from those maniacs at Covenant. That earns you points in my book. If we rescued Nick Valentine but killed Skinny Malone... Nick Valentine was in a jam, but word is you bailed him out. Rubbed out Skinny Malone in the process, too. If we rescued Nick but left Skinny Malone alive... Nick Valentine was in a jam, as usual, but word is you bailed him out and talked your way past Skinny Malone, too. And if we completed the Silver Shroud quest in Good Neighbor... Does the Silver Shroud mean anything to you? I heard he took out Sinjin's gang all by himself. Pretty remarkable, huh? He won't say all of these. Even if we complete all of these quests before talking with Deacon here, he'll only say about three of them. And I'm not sure how he chooses them. Maybe it's the most recent three quests we've completed. Maybe they're randomly selected. And I'm not even sure how many of these he says. I had to dive through the game files to find these. It was impractical for me to complete the quests and trigger them naturally in the game. At any rate, it's clear that this Deacon character has been following us. But hold on a sec. We recognize this guy. This is the guy we saw at... Diamond City, just as we were about to enter. Welcome to the, uh, Great Green Jewel. You'll totally love it here. He's the same guy whom we saw at Good Neighbor right after Hancock killed Flynn. Everyone's welcome in Good Neighbor. Even me. And he's the same guy we saw sitting in the memory lounger at the memory den. This deacon really has been following us. So you're vouching for him? Yes, trust me. He's someone we want on our side. That changes things. So, stranger, why did you want to meet with us anyway? If we got here before killing the courser, Deacon has his work cut out for him to convince Desdemona to let us in. And we have a much longer conversation. She asks Nate why we want to meet with her. And we can't say courser chip because we're not at that point in the story yet. So we could say, I have my reasons. All right. You're the only ones fighting the Institute, and I want to take them down. I'd like to say that nobody comes here out for blood, out for revenge, that everyone's here to help their fellow man. That would be a lie, though. So everyone here is out for revenge? Almost everyone. Very few members of the railroad have been spared tragedy at the Institute's hands. That tragedy is the glue that binds us together. I just want them stopped. Don't we all? The Institute's going to pay for what they've done to my family. You have a lot in common with too many of us, I'm afraid. I don't want anyone else to suffer at their hands. Amen to that. You help synths. I want to lend a hand. There's a procedure for people who want to help the railroad. And showing up unannounced isn't it. What procedure is that? One of our agents was supposed to contact you. And if you helped us out a few times, maybe you'd get an invitation to join. And then, if you're lucky, Maybe one year you'd be made a full agent. How I got here really doesn't matter. The genie's out of the bottle. For someone like me, you'll make an exception. Apparently you have talent. And like it or not, you're here now. I followed the only lead I had. Well, hopefully nobody else crashes this party. My son, Sean, was kidnapped. I'm looking for help to find him. Someone stole your boy? That's terrible. Do you know who did it? 
For your sake, I hope the Institute isn't involved. Why would the Institute be involved? Many kidnappings in the Commonwealth are perpetrated by the Institute. Why? Who knows? But I've never heard of them taking children. So hopefully they're not involved. I'm not 100% sure who kidnapped him yet. I hope for your sake it's someone else. I don't need your sympathy. Understood. But maybe we can help. All the same. I don't know who took him. I just want help getting him back. For your sake, I hope the Institute is not involved. I'll have Deacon look into this. If anyone can find a lead on your boy, he can. If we're going to be dealing with you, I need to make sure we're on the same page. You know what a synth is, right? I've heard rumors. What are they, really? The Institute created them. Synthetic humans. They're mostly organic. Part machine. Somewhere along the line, they became more than just constructs. They think, they feel, and they act just like you and me. I've heard rumors about them. A synth? What's that? They are synthetic humans created by the Institute. So close to real people that the distinction is meaningless. Yeah, I know all about them. Good. The Institute treats synths as property, as tools. Why does the Institute treat them that way? They're playing God, tinkering with things they don't fully understand. From that lofty vantage, it's easy to deny their creation's very humanity. Aren't synths just machines? And machines are tools. They started that way. But if it's impossible to tell a single difference between a synth and a human, they must be treated the same. That sounds like slavery. Exactly. Go on. So we seek to free the synths from their bondage. Give them a chance at a real life. I have a question. The only question that matters. Would you risk your life for your fellow man? Even if that man is a synth? Could you elaborate? Answer with your gut on this. Your heart. If you had to put yourself in danger to save a synth, would you do it? It depends on the circumstances. There's no middle ground with this. Would you risk death to save a synth or not? We could say no. No, probably not. No shame in that. Every person needs to know what they're willing to die for. It might be best if you kept your distance from us. Not for our sake, but for yours. The Institute wouldn't hesitate to torture and kill you for what you know. Deacon can show you out. Or we could say yes. Once, I pledged my life to protect my countrymen. I don't see this as any different. Well said. You were right about us. We're the only ones in the Commonwealth brave enough or stupid enough to fight the Institute. And we could use more brothers in arms. But right now, we don't have the time to train up a new agent. There are, however, other valuable ways you can contribute. And in turn, we can help you. See Deacon for details. You're free to go. With that, we need to talk with Deacon before Desdemona will let us inside. But if we killed the Courser, we skip that entire conversation. We don't have to pass the test about whether or not we would risk our life for a synth. Instead, we can say this. Oh, yeah, yeah. The little riddles and the decoder ring trick really makes it hard to find you. Anyone that wants to meet us is under surveillance as soon as they follow the Freedom Trail. If you were a threat to our organization, all you'd find here is an empty room. Who are you people exactly? In a world full of suspicion, treachery, and hunters, we're the synth's only friend. Yeah, yeah, we're all friends now. Let's skip to the part where you help me. I don't know if I like your attitude. Hopefully we can work something out. What you're asking for puts us in a tricky position. Des, we need to let him in. He's got an intact courser chip, for God's sake. That violates our security protocols. To hell with that. He killed a courser. There's no way he's working for the Institute. We're letting you into our headquarters. You're the first outsider ever to be given this privilege. We'll discuss the details about your chip inside. And because Deacon practically begs her to let us in, we don't have to go through any of their tests. We are not joining the railroad right now, but we are allowed into their HQ. We don't see it because it happens on the other side of this wall, but another door slides aside, which allows us into their HQ. But before doing that, we can talk to Drummer Boy here. Don't try anything, stranger. Man, Garrus really gets around. And then we can talk to Glory. Saw some of you work along the trail. Not bad. For a human, that is. For a human? What do you mean? You were born in the Wild Human Model 1.0. You ain't bad for that model. Not in the same league as us since, but hey, not your fault. The trail was easy. 
Just another walk in the park. Ha! <laughs> you know it. So you think you could have done better on the trail? Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know how you figure that marker garbage out, though. I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, whatever. Listen, you caught us at a shit time. We're still recovering from... something I can't get into. We're a man down, though. And if anything Deacon said about you is true, I'd like you on our team. What? You don't believe Deacon? Given what I saw, yeah. He might be the real deal. I don't know if I even want to join the railroad. I hear you. I can't believe so many of you guys risk your neck for us, but... Hey, if you decide to join... I'll take a pass. Suit yourself, human. But it's good to have friends out here. The Commonwealth is a hell of a place to fly solo. I'm interested. Awesome. I think you'll be a good fit. I know Dez said we don't got room. But talk to Deacon. I'm sure he's got an angle. He always does. All right, so when, or if, we ever decide to join the railroad, we come and talk to Deacon. The coarser chip side of this conversation plays a little differently if we previously found the railroad. If we stumbled upon them earlier, we come back to them to learn that they've heard all about the courser. I have a report here. It reads more like a comic book. Apparently, one hell of a fight took place at Green Tech Genetics. Oh? What have you heard? So, some mysterious stranger took out a courser. Alone. Something I'm not even sure the railroad's best agent could do. And that stranger's you. I'm all for one less courser in the world, but why'd you do it? Don't know anything about that. So someone who looks just like you took out a courser. Hypothetically speaking, why would that agent take on a courser single-handedly in the first place? You people are damn nosy. Nosy keeps us and you alive. I'm all for one less courser in the world, but I need to know why you killed him. Yeah, that was me. I took down a courser. That's what the report says. Hard to believe. I'm all for one less courser in the world, but the conventional wisdom is that you run from them rather than engage them. So why did you kill him? Do you know anything about decoding a courser chip? That's my business. I just need the code off this courser chip. I needed a courser chip. I need the code on it. That chip in his neck just looks so shiny. I couldn't help it. You have one of their chips intact? Follow me now. Either way, she invites us inside. We head down the hallway and through the door. Decoding a courser chip is a very delicate operation. A million things can go wrong. The least of which is losing the data. Fortunately, we have the right man for the job. She leads us inside to meet with a man with a strange contraption on his head. This is Tinker Tom. Hey, dude. You need something? Tom, our visitor here has a courser chip. Whoa! For real? Oh man, it's been ages! Right, some ground rules. Tom can get you the code, but once he's done, we get the courser chip. Why do you want the courser chip? Institute Tech is light years beyond what we have, and a courser chip is top of the line. I'm not gonna get into details, but that chip could help us save lives. Maybe throw a wrench in some of the Institute's operations. So, hand over the chip. I don't know, I might need that chip later. This isn't a negotiation. This is a demand. No way. That chip is mine. To anybody else in the Commonwealth, all you have is two caps worth of salvage. With us, that data is priceless. But we're not just going to give that away. Talk to me again if you change your mind. There's more going on than you know. Trust me. We have no way to peacefully progress this quest unless we agree to give the chip to her once we get the data we need. So? Fine. It's yours. All right. Tom? Make it happen. All right, little Corsa chip. Let's have the circuit analyzer take a crack at you. He pulls the chip out that we gave him and examines it. Then he plugs it into a nearby machine. We're in. Chip accessed. Just poke the analog connectors a little. W what? Oh, man, don't, don't, don't crash. Hold it together. Memory hiccup. Here it comes. Encryption algorithms. All right. All right, we're still running. Oh, man. They've added more decimals to the last cipher. This is gonna be... Come on, baby. Show me that pattern. Where is it? Wait. They're using the same logarithmic function as the key generator. Oh, man, we got lucky. I got you, you institute bastard. I got you. All right, software in. Come on. Show me that sweet bass number. Come on, baby. And we got it. 
Happy got the code. <laughs> Let me load that onto the hollow tape for ya. Good work, Tom. Hey, yeah, but I'm not sure our luck will hold up next time, Des. Start working on the rest of the chip. And you, I'd love to work with you more. Let me know if you're interested. But to be crystal clear, if you use that data and discover anything involving the Institute, you share it with us first. Otherwise, our relationship will be in jeopardy. What she just said there is really important if we want to continue to work with the railroad. If we find anything on that ship, and if we work with anyone else and not them, we might not be able to work with the railroad in the future. But what if the railroad is already dead? What if at some point in the game we stumbled upon them and killed them? Tinker Tom wouldn't be alive to help us out, but this isn't a dead end. If the railroad is dead, and if we have the Courser chip, we can head to Tinker Tom's terminal. Inside, we find an option that isn't here otherwise, decoding Institute Tech. Property of Tinker Tom, ultraviolet security. If you're reading this, the telemetry off my biological implant went night-night. So to my hopefully worthy successor, you got to know about the circuit analyzer. It's my life's work on reverse engineering Institute Tech. The circuit analyzers got built in all the tricks I picked up on scanning their chips and circuit boards. So plug her in and let Tinker Tom's patented decryption algorithms hold your hand from there. Assuming it's not booby-trapped and blows up in your face, it'll download the data into a holotape. Their tech is constantly evolving, so in time, you'll have to make updates to my baby. Keep my brothers and sisters safe, Tinker Tom out. Then, with this knowledge in hand, we can head to Tinker Tom's circuit analyzer. Activating it, use the circuit analyzer. We could do nothing, or we could decode the Courser chip. With that, we have fully analyzed the Courser chip, and we can head back to Virgil. But assuming we don't want to destroy the railroad, yet, we've got everything we needed, and we know that if we ever want to join the railroad, the invitation is open. We just need to come back here and talk with Deacon. But for now, we head back to the glowing sea. And after a long trudge through a radioactive wasteland, we arrive back at Virgil's cave. Heading inside, we can talk to the big green man. Wasn't sure I'd see you again. You managed to get what you need. Do you have anything for me? I'll take that as a yes. Can't say I'm too surprised. Nah, I just went out for a little stroll. Thought I'd stop back and say hi. It's a good thing your survival and my humanity aren't at stake. Otherwise, I might be annoyed by your attitude. But, fine. I shouldn't have doubted you'd come back. I told you I'd get it done, didn't I? Forgive me for questioning whether you might survive against a courser. Still, suppose I should have expected it. I have the code. Suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You did get rid of Kellogg after all. Not too much of a leap to take down a courser. How'd you manage to get it decoded? Does it matter? No, you're right. It doesn't really. The point is that you got it. I've made some friends in the Commonwealth. Better you than me. Face like this. I'm not gonna make too many friends. None of your damn business. Fine. Forget I asked. Doesn't matter anyway. The railroad helped me. Oh god, those kooks. I would have expected they'd be too busy trying to liberate vending machines, or setting computer terminals free, or... Sorry. They just have something of a reputation. You're not the only one who's been busy. I did the best I could. From memory and things I've overheard through the years. Came up with some schematics for you. Wasn't easy. These hands are ridiculous. Fine motor skills have gone to shit. Here's the simple explanation. You need to build a device that will hijack the signal the Institute uses to teleport coursers and send you instead. You know the craziest part of the design? That classical music station. That's the carrier signal for the relay. All the data's on harmonic frequencies. You've been hearing it all along. I want to be clear that this isn't my area of expertise. I was bioscience, not engineering or advanced systems or anything. Bioscience? Advanced systems? Divisions within the Institute. 
Specialized groups working on various projects. It'll make sense later. Your confidence is staggering. I'm just saying, I can't guarantee it'll work. I'm looking for results, not excuses. Yeah, yeah. I told you. I did the best I could. I'm sure it'll work. For the record, I haven't made any promises. But, if you can build this device, and make use of that code, you should be able to override the signal from the Institute's relay. Can you? I mean, can you build it? You have people that can help. This is a lot for one person, even you. This device, this will get me into the Institute? Yes, if built correctly. And please get it right. You have to make it in there for both our sakes. I don't know. Find people to help you if you need to, because this is it. It's the only way you're getting in, and you have to get in. For both of us. Have I given you reason to doubt me? No. But do you realize how critical this is for both of us? I got it covered. Good. Good. Because you've got to make it in there. For both our sakes. And don't you forget our agreement. I've helped you as best I can. If you make it in there, you find that serum. It's my only hope for ever being... normal. So you find it. Now go on. Take these and get to work. You do whatever it takes. Call on whoever you know to help you. With that, Virgil gives us the signal interceptor plans. And examining them in our inventory... Oh, yeah, he definitely drew these himself. How on earth are we gonna make sense of this? Looks like we're gonna have to find some friends to help us build this sucker. We are now acquainted with three major factions in the Commonwealth. The Minutemen, whom we rescued at the Museum of Freedom. The Brotherhood, whom we helped at the Cambridge Police Station and whose ship just rolled into town. And the Railroad. And that last thing Desdemona said to us makes more sense now. She was saying that we need to bring these signal interceptor plans to her and have the Railroad build it. If we don't, she's not going to be likely to work with us again in the future. We've got a choice to make. Do we work with the Minutemen? Do we work with the Railroad? Or do we work with the Brotherhood of Steel? Each faction has their own hurdles we have to jump through first before they're willing to help us. We'll explore all three paths before we make it to the Institute, but not today, because I'm all out of time. We'll choose our first faction to work with in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of Fallout 4.